Hello friends, welcome back. My name's Ramon, how are you? Today's video, we're going to be touching on a continuation of my simplified series in terms of skincare. I already posted my series on K-beauty slash the standard skincare routine essentials, sunscreens, and now we're getting into the nitty gritty of active ingredients. Namely, what we're going to be talking about today is gold standard of active ingredients, which we'll explain in a second. But before I get into today's video, I'm going to ask that you subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you're a fan of these simplified series videos, give it a thumbs up. And if there's something specific you want to see in these videos, leave it in the comments down below. I'm happy to film videos on whatever you'd like to see. So also before we get into today's video, I just want to start off by prefacing that I am not a medical doctor. I'm not an esthetician, but I am a biochemistry student. And I'm also about to start a cosmetic science degree program this coming fall. Therefore, everything I'm talking about in terms of products is in regards to biochemistry, molecular formulation perspective. So do with that what you will. So what are active ingredients? You might be asking. Well, active ingredients are essentially a set of ingredients that you find in every single skincare item that you own. They are FDA approved ingredients to deliver a certain benefit, to deliver something specific to your skin. The technical definition of a skincare active is, according to the FDA, an active ingredient is any component of a drug product intended to provide therapeutic and pharmacological activity in direct effect to a specified reason slash concern. Basically, they're these biological active ingredients which in your skincare serve a specific purpose to treat a specific malady, target a specific concern, or give you a desired result. If you look on the back of your skincare products, you'll see that there's oftentimes a section that's dedicated to active ingredients. And lots of times these are the ones that are really carrying the weight of the product on their shoulders or the specified purpose of the product that the front is oftentimes advertising. Technically, while some of these, not a lot of these do exist in the skin or in the body in some format, whether in cells or whatnot, the ingredients I'm gonna be talking about today, I am talking to in terms of being topically applied on the skin and how that affects the skin. The goal of the video I'm going to be doing again is in terms of the turn and learn methodology that Cassandra Bankson always talks about, where basically ignore the front of the packaging, ignore the marketing, the branding, all the gimmicks and the shtick of the product, turn to the back and look at what's on the ingredient list. The purpose of this video is really to explain what ingredients are and how they work so that if it's something that targets a concern that you have, you're gonna be able to go look at skincare products you have or that you wanna buy and see if they have those ingredients on them. So that way you know if that product's right for you and what you need in your routine. Gold standards. There's numerous actives in skincare. I Googled this, Google skincare actives. You're gonna see the whole list that pops up, trust. But basically what I'm focusing on is gold standards. What is a gold standard? Well, gold standard is the best, most reliable or most prestigious thing of its type. And so essentially with these skincare actives, a gold standard is ingredients that are extremely researched, well studied, and they are thoroughly proven to provide a specific result or give you a specific benefit to your skin. They got the receipts. So with that being said, let's get into it. Basically, I'm kind of going to start off with what I call the alphabet soup, kind of touch on some of the more basic vitamin active ingredients, and then get into ingredients which I think are very, very useful to include into your skincare routine. So ingredient number one, vitamin A also known as the retinoid family. Retinoids are the gold standard of skincare ingredients, reason being there is so much research and so much well-documented results as to their efficacy and as to their benefits to the skin. When they were first studied years and years and years ago, and I mean years, I mean decades, they were initially studied for acne. So first and foremost, they're great for acne. But what researchers found in the process of doing these studies is that there was also like an age reversing benefit to retinols as well. And so come to find out retinol is one of the, if not the most proven age reversing ingredient known in skincare. Now it basically works is that it expedites the skin renewal process and in doing so helps to promote the building and regeneration of collagen and elastin in the skin, which is what gives the skin plumpness and fullness. It helps to refine pores and texture in the skin, helps to reduce and treat acne and breakouts, helps to prevent breakouts, and does a lot to really brighten pigmentation in the skin. With the retinoids family, you get a lot of different forms of it. The most true form of vitamin A is retinoic acid, which you can get in prescription form only in the form of tretinoin or a lot of other like brand names, but as the, the most direct form of the acid. There's no conversion, no oxidation required to the actual thing. It is what it is. It gives you that benefit directly. Now, and I'm going to insert a little chart right below on the video, which I'm also going to reference in the comments below, a video by a YouTuber called Dr. Sam Bunting. But essentially, you can also have derivatives of this retinoic acid. These derivatives aren't necessarily the most studied, and if they are studied, they are not necessarily the most effective uh, straight retinoic acid due to the fact that they are derivatives that need to be converted in the skin in order to become that acid. Therefore, the more you deviate from straight retinoic acid, 
the less direct the results of the benefits are essentially. For now, I'm not going to delve too deeply into the retinoids and the vitamin family, but what I will say is if you want some more information at this very moment, check down in the description below for the Dr. Sam Bunting video. She describes it in a pretty nice, thorough way, but rest assured, I'm coming out with a whole video on the vitamin A family very soon for the Simplified Series. While I do recommend getting prescription strength tretinoin from your doctor if you can, there are a lot of great retinoids and retinols from other brands over the counter, such as the Drunk Elephant and the Sunday Riley retinols, as well as all the Grand Active retinoids that you can get from the ordinary. Next on the roster, vitamin B three specifically, that is niacinamide. Now, niacinamide is one of the most universal skincare ingredients in that it is super stable, it is non-irritating for the most part, and its skin benefits benefit pretty much every skin type. What are those benefits, you might be asking? As I mentioned, gold standard, well researched, vitamin B3, niacinamide, has been super, super well studied and proven to help refine pore texture and skin texture, improve dullness, reduce sebum production in the skin, which in turn helps to prevent breakouts, reduce oil production in the skin, treat current breakouts in the skin as well. It helps to brighten dull skin and treat hyperpigmentation. And it's also proven to be a really nice, subtle anti-aging ingredient as well. So as you can see, plethora of benefits from this one single ingredient. But what I mainly like about it is the fact that it's not super volatile. It reacts well with a lot of other ingredients. So you can use it in your skincare routine in conjunction with a lot of other actives. It's not going to alter the efficacy of those actives. It's not gonna irritate your skin. So you can use it day and night. There is this sort of thing where people say that it might cancel out or react negatively with vitamin C, but that's been proven that you need to expose those two to such, such, such inhumanely high temperatures in order to see that negative result. That's that's pretty much a skincare myth. So vitamin C and niacinamide, you can use well together. My favorite niacinamide products, The Ordinary has an amazing 10% niacinamide, 1% zinc serum, which is a serum in itself. Paula's Choice also has a great niacinamide booster, but you can also find it in a lot of skincare products as just part of the ingredient list. And one of my favorite items is the Secret Key Starting Treatment Essence. My favorite essence, I use this in the morning by itself and it just gives me a nice supercharge of nourishment and the niacinamide ingredient that I love and my skin benefits so well from niacinamide. I find that my texture is literally flawless. Next on the list, vitamin C. Vitamin C, which we're gonna discuss mainly in the form of L-ascorbic acid, that's like the truest form of vitamin C, is an antioxidant that helps with brightening, collagen production, protecting against free radicals, which is super important, and protecting your skin from pollution as well. That antioxidant and free radical thing is kind of a hand in hand situation. Antioxidants are, there's a lot of them, but basically they are these compounds that you find in a lot of like plant-based products and whatnot that in the skin, they have the ability to give away an extra electron and free radicals, which are super damaging to the skin. And they come from a lot of sources, but namely from UVA rays, they are looking for that extra electron. And so in order to get that extra electron, they will ravage whatever cells and DNA and whatnot's in your skin, which in turn leads to signs of aging and damage in your skin. Antioxidants like vitamin C give that extra electron to free radicals to help protect your skin. So antioxidants are super important in your skincare. The issue with vitamin C in the L-ascorbic acid format is that it's not stable. And while L-ascorbic acid is the most researched and the most proven to be the beneficial version of vitamin C, it's not stable. And so in order to find it in formulas where it is more stable and more likely to work at its most effective, there's a lot of things that have to go with it and they're generally really expensive. So what you generally find on the market available to you more readily are vitamin C derivatives, which aren't as well studied and might not be as effective, but for what they're worth, they're a form of that and they are an antioxidant. So they could be good for your skin, but what I do recommend is get L-ascorbic acid in its purest form if you can. What I personally do, and I'll link a video down on this below by an amazing YouTuber named Lab Muffin Beauty Science, is make your own vitamin C serum at home. You can get L-ascorbic acid powder, which is not uh, unstable and is super, super shelf stable in itself. And basically just make small batches of your own DIY vitamin C serum at home. You can control the percentage, you can control the strength, you are able to control the freshness of it so you get the most potent, most powerful vitamin C at your disposal whenever you want. So, highly recommend. But you need vitamin C in your life, trust. Another active, peptides. Peptides are heavy hitters when it comes to the whole anti-aging skincare field. Peptides are essentially the building blocks of collagen and elastin in your skin, which if you know anything about aging, those are what keep your skin really plump and really, really youthful looking. And as those deteriorate and wear away, that's when you get saggy skin, fine line, wrinkles, crypt keeper. When applied to the skin topically, peptides act as little messengers for your skin cells, triggering them to basically build more collagen and elastin and helping to promote that growth in your skin. Now, they're not miracle workers. They're not going 
going to instantly cure all your aging needs and whatnot, but they're kind of helpful to include, especially early on in your skincare routine in your life and daily usage to help kind of prevent the loss of that and to help promote a little bit more of a slower growth of that. But you really need to use these in conjunction with a lot of other ingredients, namely sunscreen, to really promote youthful, plump skin. But peptides are super useful to have in your skin and they're great humectants, so. My favorite peptide-rich skincare items are, first and foremost, the Drunk Elephant Proteiny, which I know I say what I say about Drunk Elephant, but that protein moisturizer is A1. And then Polish Choice does have really great peptide boosters as well. Speaking of humectants, the humectants to end all humectants is hyaluronic acid. It's one of those really basic skincare ingredients that everyone learns about, and reason being is that it's this compound that can hold a thousand times its weight in water. That's like the staple like statement of hyaluronic acid. Basically how it works is it draws moisture from its surroundings. And so when applied topically to the skin, it helps to pull moisture up from the deeper layers of the skin up to the surface layers, which helps to make the skin look more plump and youthful because it has more water retention in it. But it can also pull water from its surroundings. Now the caveat with that is that if you don't have a very moist surrounding, so if you don't live in the Caribbean or super tropical rainforest, you don't have enough moisture in your surrounding area to really facilitate the absorption from your surroundings. And as a result of that, it essentially starts to dehydrate your skin if you don't have anything to pull moisture, but also lock in moisture. And so what you need to do then is pair it with a really water rich moisturizer so that the hyaluronic acid can feed from the moisture in that moisturizer, that hydration that it, the moisturizer is providing, but also the moisturizer, because it is a moisturizer, has occlusive properties in it to lock in that moisture as well. That's the key. While hyaluronic acid can draw hydration to it, it needs to be able to lock it in, and by itself it can't do that. So just make sure you're pairing a hyaluronic acid with a nice occlusive ingredient to really lock in that hydration so that you can lock in that nice, plump, supple skin. On a side note, uh, you might also hear sodium hyaluronate, which is essentially a salt derivative of hyaluronic acid. And what that basically sums up is that it's a smaller version. So while hyaluronic acid is a bigger molecule and it does more on the surface layers of skin, sodium hyaluronate is a much tinier and it can get much deeper. And so it helps clump up and pull in moisture to those deeper layers of the skin to really enforce that nice supple plump skin look. And with that, actually a lot of times what you're finding in your hyaluronic acid products is namely just a sodium hyaluronate because it's a lot more stable and a lot more useful and has a lot higher of an efficacy level to it. Next on the list is one of my personal favorite skincare items. And I've talked about this in a lot of videos and that is azelaic acid. And azelaic acid is kind of like the girl if you got acne prone skin, but also like hyaluronic acid and niacinamide, it's one of those really universal skincare ingredients. Azelaic acid is found naturally in your skin, but applied topically to your skin, it reduces redness and inflammation in the skin. So it's great if you have rosacea or like really irritated skin. It's antimicrobial, it helps to prevent the causes of poor congestion so that it helps to treat acne, prevent acne, treat breakouts, reduce the darkness from acne scarring, calms down inflammation as a result of acne and breakouts, it helps brighten up the skin, it helps to refine poor texture, it's kind of one of those it does a lot of things ingredients, but like niacinamide, it's not volatile, it works in conjunction with a lot of other skincare ingredients, so you can really build it into your routine on top of a lot of other actives without irritating your skin. It also calms inflammation, so if your skin is irritated, it helps to kind of reduce that down, so if you can get it, get it. A lot of times azelaic acid is included in prescription acne treatments from doctors, but you can also find it in topical boosters and serums like the Polish Choice Azelaic Acid, but my personal favorite is the Ordinary's Azelaic Acid Suspension 10%, which is a nice little silicone rich cream, which I like to put on after all of my actives and moisturizers to kind of log everything in, but give me that basilic acid benefit. This is one of my top three skincare ingredients, period. And the number one most important skincare active that you need in your skincare routine, in my opinion, is sunscreen. Yes, sunscreen active. If you look on the back of your sunscreens, you'll see that the top part of it, the active ingredients, are sunscreen filters. We talk about actives and what they do for your skin, preventing breakouts, treating breakouts, reducing fine lines, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, but honestly, all of that is useless if you are not wearing sunscreen. The most doctor recommended skincare thing you can put into your routine is sunscreen because sunscreen not only helps to prevent cancer causing UVA rays from really ravaging your skin, but they also prevent them from causing early signs of aging in your skin. And they're also just a really easy skincare staple to put in your skincare routine. I'm not gonna get into a lot of details. I'll include a list of sunscreen filters on the screen so you know what to look for when you are looking at sunscreens as really good actives to see in your sunscreen ingredients. But I have a whole video on sunscreens, which I'll link in the card and down below, so check it out. But really important active sunscreen filters. So I gave you a good list of gold standard actives to look for, and these are things I really think you should incorporate into your routine ASAP. I didn't talk about exfoliators at all or a lot of skin brighteners. I have another video coming on that very soon, but 
rest assured if you're thinking like where are the AHAs and BHAs it'll be coming up in a new video with the actives that I mentioned you can find them in a lot of different formats whether that's toners essences masks moisturizers creams all the stuff but the best format to find these actives in are leave-on treatments so that is your toners essences moisturizers and serums because they're not rinsed off of the skin they have the time to really give your skin that nice boost and that nice exposure to the active ingredients you're looking for my personal favorite way of introducing these into my routine is in the form of actual serums because serums have the most concentration of these actives. They're kind of a nice, semi-heavy, high concentration, higher percentage form of the active ingredients. For example, like salicylic acid, retinol, niacinamide. The ingredients you put underneath them really prep your skin to accept them and absorb them, but also what you put after them really lock them in so they're able to do the work they need to do. If you find that higher strength serums might not be cutting it for you because they're a little bit too much, check out an essence. Essences are basically diet serums in that they are much more lightweight they are a little bit more gentle due to the fact that they don't have such a high concentration of the active in them. Therefore, they're a little bit more conducive to sensitive skin types. The main concern with introducing actives into your skincare routine is the risk of irritation. In order to avoid irritation, be mindful of how you're introducing these products into your routine and how many you're introducing into your routine at once. Introducing a lot of things into your routine at once isn't the most conducive just because it's a lot of change at once. Your skin might freak out, but on top of that, certain actives don't necessarily mix well together. And you don't know if you have a reaction, what that reaction is being caused by if you're introducing too many at once. So really start one at a time, test it out for a few days. If you feel that it's okay, then introduce another one. But what I will say is, kind of balance things out. Sometimes for like higher strength acids, I try to do them only at night, maybe a few times a week. So I really space out to give my skin enough time to heal and rejuvenate. Also think about using one active in the AM and the other in the PM or alternating days for those as well. Also, you don't have to use an active on the entirety of your face if you're targeting a specific concern. For example, like where I have active breakouts, I'm gonna use retinol to treat that. But on the rest of my face where I'm focusing on, for example, pigmentation issues, I'll target those more with the azelaic acid. So I'm multi-theraming, if you will. The most important thing though is to tailor your routine to your specific needs. Don't just watch some blogger or some influencer whose routine you're a really big fan of and steal that entire routine and expect it to work for you the same exact way. It might not, it probably won't. That's the reason I'm doing this video so that you can learn what ingredients do and what they're known for. Find those ingredients and products you might want to use and start to include those into your routine because your skin is your skin. It's very unique and it has specific needs. What I'm trying to target might not be the same thing you're trying to target. Also keep in mind, just because an active might be good for one thing, that active might not work for you. I know people who can't use vitamin Cs, I know people who can't use retinols, and those target, for example, brightening and anti-aging, but there's also other actives that do the same thing. So play around with actives that might target a one specific concern like acne or anti-aging. But what I will say is the most important thing to remember when working with actives and using actives and incorporating them into your skincare routine is you need to be patience patience is key consistency is key you're not going to find results happening in a day or two maybe even a week it might take a minute it might take a month or two before you start to see any noticeable results due to active usage for example i've been using retinols for at least I think a year, year and a half now. It's at this point that I'm really realizing the effects that retinols had on my skin or my pores look great, my skin texture looks amazing. I really haven't had a lot of breakouts, but it's taken a full year. Just keep in mind, be consistent with your usage, be patient, but understand it's going to take time to see results. Don't give up, trust me, period. So with that, that is called Standard Actives, semi-simplified. I'm going to elaborate on a few of these ingredients in separate videos, but this is kind of like the bare bones breakdown of what the products do. If you see them in your skincare products, Ideally, if you want the most use and the most effect from these active ingredients, look for them higher up in the ingredients list. That's the only way you're going to know they have higher concentrations in the products that they're using. A lot of these ingredients can be sensitizing, can make your skin a little bit more photosensitive. And at the end of the day, you should always be wearing sunscreen, but wear your sunscreen, period. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below and hit that bell so that you know when I post subsequent simplified videos as well as any of the other videos I post on my channel. And thank you guys for watching. If there's anything you specifically want me to elaborate on or really discuss in a video in itself, just leave that down in the comments. I like hearing what you guys have to say. I really like interacting with you guys and talking about skincare products and ingredients. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye.